What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today I thought I'd do a quick video on how easy it is to do the front brake pads on my 2017 Dodge Charger RT. Keep watching. All right, so a little backstory on the brakes. So a few months ago, my wife and I were driving to California and we got stuck in rush hour traffic. It was in the left lane, windows were down, gorgeous day. And the squeal that was echoing off the K rail was insane. It was just, it was deafening. Um, so got home, took my car in for its scheduled service. And I was like, check out the brakes. They're squealing real bad on the left side. Get my car back from the dealership and they're like, nothing wrong with your brakes. Plenty of life left in the pads. Didn't notice anything wrong with the rotors, nothing. There was no, no issue with the brakes. We pulled it apart, cleaned them up, put it back together. They're fine. Okay. Um, and off and on since then, I would get a squeal from, coming from the left side. Uh, it wasn't all the time. It was normally when it was cold, like when I first get in the car and start driving, it would squeal for a few minutes. Then it would kind of go away. So I'm like, all right, well, I'm just going to go ahead and do my brake pads. I mean, cheap insurance, right? So I've already done the left side. There's nothing wrong. I compared the old brake pads to my new ones, and they look almost new. Uh, I've got about 50,000 miles on this car, so there should still be plenty of life left in those pads, and there is. So I thought I would just take this opportunity to show you guys how easy it is to do the front brake pads on a Dodge Charger. So in order to get the caliper off of the, I guess it's a carrier, to get to the brake pads themselves, there's two bolts that need to be removed. One's right here, and then there's the same bolt on the bottom side. Now, the bolt itself is a 13 millimeter, and then you're gonna to need to hold this nut here, and this is an 18 millimeter. So, got my, my trusty impact here. Now this isn't tight at all, so you can get on there, you can break it loose. Once that starts to spin, and there's the first bolt. And then we do the same with the bottom one. Once you get those bolts out, you can remove the caliper from the carrier. I like to use just a, you can use a screwdriver. I got a small little pry bar here. Just gonna get it in between the carrier and the caliper. It's not real tight. Support the, support the caliper. Don't let it just drop. There we go. I'm gonna set the caliper somewhere where it's supported. Now all you would have to do is slide the brake pads out of these clips and put new ones in. Now, normally you'd probably wanna replace these clips. There's a set that comes with the new brake pads, but as you can see in these, I mean, there's plenty of life left in those brake pads. As a matter of fact, I have a brand new one here. Compare them to each other. There's plenty of life left in these old pads. So I'm not gonna replace it. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna clean them up, clean up the, the rotor. I'm probably gonna put a little bit of grease on these ears here. These, these ears are what ride in these clips. So I'm gonna put a little, I'm gonna clean them up, put a little bit of grease on them, and then I'm gonna reapply uh, where is it? Some of this uh, disc brake quiet. Just gonna put some of that on here. To, it's gonna help reduce any squealing, hopefully. Now also, if you were gonna be replacing your brake pad, say, say these are really worn down. So there's gonna be a big difference between your old ones and new ones. You would have to go in to your brake caliper here and push these cylinders into the caliper. The best way to do that would be take your old your old brake pad and set it in there and then put a C-clamp to push on the old brake pad to get those cylinders in rather than put the C-clamp directly on the cylinder and potentially 
damage the cylinders. By putting the old brake pad there, it'll spread that force out a little bit and put more even pressure on these cylinders. You don't have to worry about damaging them. But I don't have to do that since I'm not replacing my brake pads. I'm trying to do this around the, around the cameras a little, a little difficult. All right, with the brake pads removed, I've checked the rotors out and there is like no scoring on my rotors. There's no need to have them turned or anything like that. They'll be just fine. So I'm just gonna clean everything up with some brake cleaner and then get everything put back together. All right, now I'm just gonna take a little bit of grease. And like I said, I'm just gonna kind of grease up these ears a little bit where they slide in those clips, just to help them out a bit. Then I'm also gonna add the disc brake quiet to the back, just a basically a, an adhesive that helps bond the brake pad to the caliper or to the pistons. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of this on here, spread it around, and then start reassembly. Don't mind my head, edit this out. helps if it's actually lined up right. All right, once we get the, the caliper back on, it's time to go ahead and install the bolts. Now I tried to get as good an angle here as I can get, um, but to install the bolts, I'm gonna do just a little bit of blue Loctite on there. Whoop, way too much. Clean some of that off there. Doesn't take a lot. And we'll just run these in by hand. And I drive it in, but I don't want to go all the way down with it because these get torqued to 44 foot pounds. So I don't want to go all the way with it. Oop. Give that a check. Let's get the, get the other ones set up here to go in. A little bit of Loctite there. Run that bolt in, hopefully. There we go, get started. And I got torque wrench out, it's already set to 44 foot pounds. And try to get in here in a way. There we go. Not much room in here to try to torque this bottom one. All right, so everything's installed. The bolts are torqued down to 44 foot pounds and they have just a slight amount of blue Loctite on there. All right, so let's see if we can eliminate some of the questions and comments up front. Uh, first, yes, my driveway is sloped. Uh, the emergency brake is on and the rear wheels are chalked. Next, there is no need to bleed the brakes. I never opened up the, the brake system. I never introduced air into the brake system. Hell, I didn't even open the calipers at all. So there's no need to bleed the brakes. Next, the caliper bolts. Yes, I used blue, which is medium strength Loctite. I didn't use any C's, uh, and that's because if you look at the bolts when I removed them, you could see there was already a thread locking compound of, of some sort on the bolt or a thread sealer. The thread lock, since it's medium strength, it won't be too difficult to remove, and it also acts 
as a thread sealant since it dries in the lack or in the uh, absence of oxygen. So the thread lock should seal the threads kind of like an anti-seize would do, but it will keep the bolt from loosening it all from its 44 pound torque value. And considering that that's the slide bolt that it screws into, you don't want to use anti-seize. Now I know there's a big debate on that and um, I know there's a big ongoing debate as far as if you can use anti-seize on those bolts, we should use thread lock, which is the correct answer. I went with a thread lock based on the fact that the factory bolts already have a thread locking or a thread sealing compound on them. Also, I did not do anything with the slide bolt. Like I said, I only have 55,000 miles on this car. The brakes really didn't need to be done. Um, probably when I get the brakes done or I do the brakes once the pads are actually worn to the point they need to be replaced, then I will pull that slide bolt out and make sure that is thoroughly lubed. I think that about covers it for the front brakes on the Charger RT. Um, of course, I won't know about the squealing until I get it all back together and put some miles on it. Um, I'll probably end up doing the same to the rear brakes because I'm not exactly sure where the squeal was coming from. I'm pretty sure it was the front, but I might as well go ahead and tear the back apart and look into those also. But that'll be another video. So thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll see you on the next one.